Yo, what's up you guys? This week we're talking about the Lightroom updates. These are really interesting because we ended up getting a lot of different things, but there's one thing specifically that I think will help out a lot of people, especially when we're talking about getting nice contrast for something like this where I actually have a subject that is kind of bland at the moment. Now we have something that's really interesting as far as two people that are in love and you can tell that through the image, but with the lighting that I got, um, this was taken about two years ago before I even started into flash photography. So it's interesting to see where you come from, but I wanted to show you something that'll help you out if you're kind of in the, in the same realm with having a bland photo. There's a couple of updates that Adobe put out, but one specifically that I think we need to mention that I think is the most helpful right now, at least something that I've played with a little bit today since it's October 26th and they just came out. But I think one thing that I really, really like is the select subject feature and the ability to play within layers with the new updates. So with select subject, you can essentially do that. When you have a prominent object in your photo, you basically can select a subject and then invert it if you want to change the background or just uh, do additions or subtractions away from that mask or whatever, but it's really interesting how you're able to do that now. So I want to show you just this quick image and do a little quick update or a quick uh, redo of this edit. So I've completely like eliminated everything that I did before and we're going to redo it with two simple things as far as the select subject goes and see what we come up with. So let's check it out. So now that we're in Adobe, what we're gonna do is do this little masking circle and then do select subject. And then we're gonna create a second one and we're also going to do select subject. So the first one is to select our subject and the other one we're gonna do an inverse of it. So the first one we're gonna do is like I said, we're gonna hit select subject, it's gonna detect our subject. And then we're gonna do a second one, we're gonna do select subject again, let it detect our subject, and then we're gonna invert the second one. This is an easy way to give you a nice pop off off your background. Because basically what we're gonna do is the second one is we're gonna open it up and we're gonna do invert to give us our background. So with our first one we have, we're gonna name this one uh, C and A. And then our second one, we're going to name that one uh, let's do B, G. Okay, so now that we have our first one, we're basically going to adjust this so we have them as our main subject, obviously. We want them to pop. So I'm gonna hit O to actually remove the overlay. You can also hit it here. And one way to do this is just to play with the sliders just like you normally would. So this is gonna add a lot of contrast and that's gonna take a lot of the light out as far as that goes. But then we can adjust that a little bit more contrast and then adjust from there. So take some of the highlights back out, uh, improve some of those shadows, push those up a little bit. Uh, we can just play with these just like we normally would, right? But then we're gonna add a little bit of clarity just so we have them really sharp. And then what we're gonna do is go into our second mask, remove the overlay by hitting O, and then we can do something like this. We can really drop some of these highlights that are kind of like contrasting with our image here. So we can do exposure, we could do something where we have, uh, we could remove some of the highlights from the sky, we could also increase some of those shadows. Um, there's a lot you could do with this, but really what I would do is this. I would take all this off just to show you. So remove the overlay and then what we'll do is do a contrast. So we have a nice gradient here and then we will increase the highlights just a bit to bring that overlay back up or to bring the highlights back up right here kind of highlighting them um, and then we'll kind of decrease some of these shadows maybe. Um, in some ways, but right here, I like this grass. I like the highlights, so I like being able to see that. So I'm gonna remove some of that shadow. Uh, the whites are a little bright, so we're gonna bring those down. And then the blacks, I don't typically touch. But here's another thing. When you have bokeh in the back of your image, one thing that you can do to add a little bit more is reduce that clarity. So you can see right here, the fringe of the, of the trees are basically kind of blowing out even more, which is really nice. So you go from this down here. And you can remove a little bit of texture if you wanted to do that as well. Um, that just basically gives you a little bit more bokeh, which is really nice. And it's, it's pretty interesting because basically if we take that off, that's what we started with as far as the background. And now we have this. And then here we have something that's a little bit more muted, something that's not really punchy. And then we end up with something like this where we get a lot more light, especially in like right in the center of our two subjects.
So if we take both of those off, we have that one and we have that one for our original um, photo. And then now we can add that back in and add that back in to give it just another way to have a really punchy subject. And it really was only two masks. Now what's really interesting about this is the fact that I came up with this edit in about three minutes just by adding two masks and adjusting the, the exposure variances basically between the background and the subject to be able to create something that really like has our subject stand off our, their background. Now this is something that you've been able to do a lot of in Photoshop, but what's really interesting about the new Lightroom updates is the fact that you can do them in Lightroom. A lot of people feel like Photoshop is kind of not user friendly and it's kind of hard to learn. So I think for beginners, this is a great way to be able to start into something like masking. And then maybe you eventually will graduate into uh, wanting to do something in Photoshop. But for people that are beyond that and really just love Photoshop, I still think this is a really great way to use Lightroom because it's a way to do everything inside Lightroom. Um, so if you have those times where you really need to like kick out a photo to your audience or whatever, whether it's social media or to a client, I think this is a really fast way to do it. So I hope that you will use it just like I did here or some other way and you'll let me know how you did it. Make sure you leave me all your comments down below. Let me know all your different things. Have you run into like quirks or anything like that? Because this is brand new. So I'm sure there's a lot of things that people have seen that it won't select for or where it will select for and you didn't expect it let me know all of your comments down below in the in the bottom there and also if you want to make sure you hit subscribe the thumbs up button and the bell notification that way you get all the new content when it comes out i super appreciate all appreciate all of it and also if you want to make sure to follow me on tiktok instagram and twitter all of the links are down below because i'm on those daily i'm literally an addict for social media so please let me have some comments and let me know what you're thinking about with all these different things. And also, if you want to make sure to check out all of my other content here on YouTube. But with that, I'm gonna hit you with a typical and I'm gonna peace out and I will see you guys in the next one. Go check this out, let me know what you think. See you guys.